All right, since we're using that, I don't think we can play music. Do you have music on your phone? Yeah. yeah. Kind of music I this kind of music, the kind of music I want to be playing is on this my phone that I'm using to record. Yeah, and we need music. Oh, you want music for yes. Because this one that is um, the boom, 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 I don't understand what the noise is all about. Hi, guys. Hi, everyone. Come on in. Come right in. This is AK Fab of Nigerian Celebrity Network. Hi, hi, hi. Happy Valentine's Day, guys. I have someone who decided to surprise me today, Valentine's Day. Somebody who decided to come see me on Valentine's Day to say hello. And Wale, let me introduce you to everybody. This is Oye Wale, Oye Wale. We used to work, we used to work together at NTA, you know, back in the day, doing Daybreak Nigeria with Yinka Craig, uh, Marianne Arthur, and Jeffrey Ozuemen, and some other people. And Wale, you're welcome to Pillow Talk. Thank you. I hope not. Yeah, I hope you're not putting me on the spot. Yes, I'm putting you on the spot, though. Yeah, I just came to. You know you, eh, Wale, you've always been a, a very, 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 very difficult picking. Yeah. A very difficult picking. This Wale has been giving people problems, even on Facebook, disturbing everybody. You know, but you know what? I know how to handle him. Are you shy? I'm not. You've always been camera shy, though, yeah. Wale. That's why I work behind the scene. You've always worked behind, you love to work behind the scene, right? Always behind the scene. And guys, Wale is extremely talented. This guy can produce documentary that will shock you all right his style of writing is ex so exceptional and when when what he does his reports back then when we we're at nta people we always like look forward to seeing the finished product because when he goes into that editing room and he knows how to pen and write all you know like whatever Gide. Gide. <laughs> with Gide. Uh, what's that? Saeed. Saeed. The editor, that Mr. Ah. Mr. Who? Mr. No, Mr. You. Um, <laughs> Raphael. Raphael. Raphael, dear. He's, he's actually my friend on Facebook. Are you serious? Raphael, you haven't seen him in a while, right? After they break Nigeria, he never jammed. Are you serious? So is it? I get his contact. He never jammed. He's, he's on my Facebook. Raphael, dear, he's there. And he's, he's there. The but please, where is Mr. Bissiri? No, Mr. Bissiri still runs Andromeda. Andromeda Productions. <laughs> Alright, I'm not gonna say anything because I heard it, another story, but <laughs> I'm not gonna call I'm not gonna call Mr. Bisu you out. <laughs> let's but I'm glad he's still running the like, let's uh, we won't you, you guys will not hear, even hear it from my own mouth. So. Uh, I mean I'm hearing stories about the my former Oga Mr. Bisu, but I'm not saying anything. No. I didn't say anything. You push it over and tell him anything. All these big boro people. Anyway, guys, you know what? He's doing okay, Abi. When was the last time you saw him? About three, three years ago. Three, four years ago. They were still in the Adeni office. They moved. No, they actually have their own studio and everything. Like they have a full blown studio? Yeah. Are they, they producing produce, anything? Oh, yeah, yeah. They produced um, the TV program for Bank of Industry for the last maybe 10 years. Even before Mr. Pip died. Oh, and they're still running it. Wow. It's still a franchise with Bank of Industry. Oh, wow. Doing great. Oh, wow. Making good money. Can they pay me? You think? Well, I tell you about going on. They too big for the entire budget. And my mouth don't work. They can't pay me. For the entire budget. Are you saying they can't even? The entire budget will not even afford it. Hey God, thank you Jesus. My market value has soared. Go back, you know, not market value. Just go back to, go back to your dollar. Don't come and, don't come and mess up our night. My market value has soared, guys. No, but they're different. They're actually different. They're doing okay, Abi. So Wally, you know how I do it on Pillow Talk. So I'm gonna tell you how I do it. See, eh? oh, I've been my, thinking. Eh, we're not going off air very soon. Why? <laughs> we're not going off air. Don't mind this man. Well, what I want to ask is this, eh? I wanted to actually ask you. A lot of women murdering and killing their husbands. Oh. Yep. <laughs> Every day when I go on the internet, it's either this woman just stabbed her husband. Or oh, today, this morning, I saw a woman poured hot water on her husband. And I can't, I can't remember whether it was a weary or somewhere, somewhere. I can't remember where. But she poured hot, hot water all over the man. His whole body had scars. Like, I don't know, first degree burn or whatever. Why, why do you think this is happening, Wally? 
but I think the frustration is much more. <clears throat> you can't take away the, the frustration in the country. So you need to vent it on somebody. Mm -hmm. Now, when you have... So I don't know who is, who is frustrated the most now. If you have a man... And you know, really, let's go back to the basics. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you guys can hear us. Can you guys hear us? Can somebody just let us know that you can hear what we're saying? Because I don't know. I see a few people online. Sorry, Wally. Let me just quickly acknowledge a few people. Nonya, how are you, honey? Nonya Juru. Them Dalo, welcome. Pillow to pillow talk with our Princess Jewel. Kedene. Eh? Tomato Jose. Eh? How are you, honey? Cynthia, we letting them kedo. Eh? Wally Ade Tarami. How are you? That's Happy nice. Valentine, Cynthia. How are you, honey? Peace. How are you? Tony Ojo, how are you? Yusuf Abba, how are you? Alaji Razak Sani, how are you? Ken Larry Ike, how are you? Um, Said. Yikes. Adigu Said. Said was supposed to be here. Yeah, my day. He did work now. Said was supposed to join us as one of our day breakers because this is like my reunion. I'm trying to meet up with, you know, maybe a, a few of um, my former NTA, Nigeria Television Authority, day breaker people. Um, so it just happens that, you know, Wale ha you know, happens to be around the neighborhood today and decided to just pop by to say hi to Fab. Um, I know we're supposed to meet up with um, Jennifer, Uloma, um, Igwe, but she is, is she not a manager for news or whatever? No, she did. Yeah, she, no, she, yeah, I think she's probably close to me. She's, she, she's climbing rapidly, so... Our Jennifer is now manager. Who would have thought? She's on duty. Who would have thought our Jennifer Igwe would be would be manager for news? It's a big girl. A big girl, yeah, NTU. Yeah. They should come and hire me now. But NTU cannot pay me, Shah. You know your, you know your people there. No, they can't pay me now. Wally. Bayer is now, I hear Bayer is now assistant manager. No, assistant director. Assistant Abuja. what? Bayo Gori. Shout out to Bayo Gori. Bayo Ogori. Big boy, Abuja. Are you serious? Yes. Assistant director. Oh um, more. Let him become director so I can go. Yeah, so we can go. <laughs> <laughs> Let him be and who else? I hear um what's that other uh, Mike or Molo Dolu? Mike is the assistant director of me Lagos here. Yeah. Uh -huh, yeah. So I think he's um bios counterpart while he's in Lagos. Yeah. Alright, so guys, without even you know like dragging it too long, I wanted to talk to Wale and find let's find out. You said frustration is at the root of Okay, so frustration, but let's yeah. but let's get some things. Please. Okay. Money is actually what makes marriage work, whether you like to believe it or not. Money. Money, money makes marriage work. Hmm. It's not sex. How many years have you been married now, Ali? 10 go to 11. 11. Hey! Out of money. 11 years marriage. So, so the gist <laughs> is money makes marriage go around. You know, how do you say money makes the world go around? Mm -hmm. Money makes marriage go around. Money, money is like the food that, that's actually the marriage is. Sex, for example, is just like salt. Mm -hmm. So you really want to get the taste of the food. You have to add the salt. You add the salt, or you can live without the. Trust you me, can you live can without, live the, without the, salt. the salt. And the, and the why, soup will still be sweet. That's why when you are seventy, eight, when when you are both seventy and eight, you don't and the need. Sex is no more there. You don't need the it, salt. It, it, the can still go on. Yeah. Wow. But if you really want to taste the food, you know, just like a normal chef would say, if you want. The salt opens up the flavors in the food. Yes. You're not going to be able to taste the real food. Except you put salt. Those salt yeah. Yeah. So if sex is not good. But that's not, but that's the list of the problem. Okay. The real substrate of marriage is money. is money. And a lot of people are not getting it here in Nigeria. And once you don't have it, believe me. Wow, money answers all. Yeah, it's, especially in marriage, answers all things. So those frustrations you are saying, half of them can be endured if only the man has money. Or if it's a woman who has the money, if only she's willing to put that money, that's why you find lots of marriages working because the man does not have money, but the woman has money, and the woman is willing to pump this money into marriage. It works fairly a bit. Okay. So I think for me, it's, it's first and foremost the frustration. There's money in Nigeria, but it's not going around. Mm. It's only being circulated among the few people. Mm -hmm. Let me say this on here. My, I, I, luckily, I don't even know you. Have you, heard of, have you ever heard about the job between e money and his wife? <laughs> Who's kind of people who have money? E money. E -money. Who is e money? Me, I don't know. One guy, one Dubai guy, Abi. I think I've read something. One who lives in Dubai. 
He actually lives in Lagos. Kiss his brother. Kiss the singer. Yes, Kiss the Limpopo. Yeah. Okay. Now, the brother. Do you okay. really hear so much about troubles in their marriages? Mm, no. No. I can't tell the state of the marriage, but money is there. And once you have money, the rest is there. So those frustrations you see, but starts first and foremost. Well, before in, guys. So what we've been reading about is that these women, some of them will murder their husbands because they caught the man cheating having if you know like affair or infidelity and women are not taking that anymore because i think for a very long time it was it's always been like you know men murdering the women or beating a woman to death or you know abusing a woman i mean that's what we've been saying in, you know in the media in the last maybe like, like a couple years or so and it's rare that, that we come across um a woman killing a man. I'm not saying it doesn't happen, but it's not really been the high point, or should I say, focus in uh, most of the news. But let me tell you, this 2020, I think it's something else. Yeah, Every day there is one man that is being abused or media. killed no, but or hurt that's purely social by media. a woman. Social media influence. What do I mean? Social media influence in the sense that the countries, other countries, mm -hmm. aside of the African countries, I don't know about. South Africa or Egypt. Over there, once you cross, they are going to cross into their blood. Mm -hmm. The woman gets the upper hand yeah. in marriage. Yeah. So for a long time, before we had this bridge, uh -huh. this uh, interconnectivity bridge between what's happening abroad and here, uh -huh. we had to live with the stories our forefathers, our fathers told us, and the woman was depressed, so submissive and everything. But now we're beginning to you click on Instagram. Alright, you see big that <laughs> just married the man for less than six months and then the next thing they say is entitled to half of the man's property in, property, in property so does it mean in nigeria they don't believe in um prenuptial agreements no, no. that that will restrict the well i don't think people we'll, do it anyway we'll follow you do <laughs> so are you saying i can marry a rich man and collect money. money no <laughs> that's the you i can't i can't do it here why not no because i'm not sure the laws are that much of you on your side like yeah. it is abroad yeah you know how they say family it. too. Like no, yeah, one. family. You know how they say when you even approach just hmm. like um, I don't know what's the name of this comedy. Okay, but that's joke. Okay. Then you approach the police station and say, and then the police will be like, oh, wait, who did you come to report? Your husband, as in your hmm. husband. I mean, you've already lost the case when the policeman is even asking you. You can't come to the station and report your husband. Whereas over there, all the police hmm. wants, all the law wants is to for protect, the wife to protect no, the woman. For the wife to just make a little complaint ah. just make that little complaint if the man does the complaint they're probably going to say okay let's take with a pinch it's of the same thing oh, with Wally. those guys they are willing to jump out straight away yeah. if it's the woman yeah they will do for for both sexes but you can't tell me they don't have a little more preference because the psyche is that the man the, the man can't oppress the woman okay no, no the woman can't oppress the man mm. so for the first time because of the closeness in um, cultures now where I don't have to have been in London to know what happens in London. Mm -hmm. I see men getting in the copper and suddenly people are waking up and be like, oh, well, this man has been cheating me for years and trust me, some women have been cheated yeah. for a long time in this own side of the culture. Guys, can you hear me? I don't even know. Like, Sorry, so, Wale, hold on one second. Let me just... Can, guys, can you hear us? Yusuf Abba. Um, well, hi. Alaji Razak, Sunny. Hi. Um, Kenny... Ken Larry EK, how are you doing? I think I've said hi before. Um, Bill, 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 Isuku, hi. <laughs> Augusty, one them, can you guys hear us? Uh, Chief Freddy, so I see you too. Nana Sewa, how are you doing? Chief Somers, and I will not call weather for dear. I mean, I don't want to leave now. Eh, Duchess Nena, how are you, honey? Eh, you made my life today. Welcome, sweetie. Um, Tony, you guys should let me know. Can you guys hear what we're talking about? Because I'm trying to like figure out from a Nigerian perspective, right? You know me, I'm Americana now. I just want to find out why women are murdering their husbands this 2020. It's like this thing has been taking up a notch. It's all over the news. Like every day you wake up, is one woman poured hot water. One woman stabbed her husband multiple times. One woman killed the husband. Or something is going on. It's like I, I'm, I'm beginning to feel like women are growing balls. Hey, eh? I'm sorry I said that, but 
I know it's, it sounds horrible, but it sounds as if like maybe for years a lot of women were oppressed or have been oppressed or couldn't speak up or couldn't take action or were on the receiving end. I'm not saying that there's any justification for what is going on, but I'm sure you guys understand what I, where I'm going with this, right? It just seems as if like finally women are like women are doing, you know, are retaliating and it's not ending well for our men. It is not ending well for our men. I keep saying it that there is no reason to stay in a in a toxic or in an abusive relationship. And guys, I, ha I, I people think I'm I'm insensitive sometimes when I say I have no remorse and I have no pity for people who lose their lives. God forgive me in domestic violence, especially if they've endured it for years. Because and I know some of these victims or people don't speak up until years. But my own thing is, there's always the red flag there warning you. Or like, it's not something that, that just happens over, 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 overnight. When you look at it, you will notice that there's a history of like abuse that the family knows about. Because when the man beats the woman black and blue, people will know. Her neighbors will know. Her friends will know. Her family will know. All right. But they're not doing anything about it. Instead, our society in Nigeria encourages the woman to stick it out. Our society will tell the woman, you know, be patient and they want to make peace in the marriage. You know, they will think about your children and that, that, that crap annoys the heck out of me. All right. When you start using your children as an excuse to stay in a, um, a toxic relationship, I will not have any pity for you when you lose your life. I'm sorry. All right. I am a survivor. I have been in an abusive, you know, marriage before. All right, that I found myself wrestling, wrestling. Uh, do, you, do you know what wrestling is? WWF wrestling in my own home. That I woke up and I said, no, I, I'm not going to do this anymore. I'm not going to die, you know, defending and protecting myself. Like, nobody should have to fight with somebody that you claim you love. All right, not that kind of fight where and anything can happen. All right. Um, Wally, the other day I was watching this video. I don't know if you saw the video of these two guys in... um. Ibo guys, I think they're from my town all over. You know, but I didn't finish watching it. I just saw the beginning of the video. Okay. I skipped it. And then the next thing I heard the story that Okay. Um, I think someone uploaded, was it like the um, one died? Yeah. Something? So what happened was in that video, it was in South Africa, right? And these two guys, only God knows, because I know wherever they were, they you know, they were policemen, they South African police or whatever. But from what I understood or understand, they're they are siblings, they're brothers or nephews or cousins or whatever, I don't know. But one one person, this tall, this guy was really tall and huge, really huge guy. He went and hit this other guy, mm -hmm. and the other guy that he hit just got angry and picked up a stone and hit him. And what I from the, from what I saw in that video, because the guy is tall, he bent, thinking the stone will fly over him, but instead the stone hit him on the on the forehead, and he just fell to the ground, and that was automatic traumatic brain injury TBI and he just and from what I heard they said he died um, at the hospital on the on the way to the hospital or something but this guy was there but what I noticed was this whole thing happened in less than one minute less than one minute from beginning to end from the time the first guy hit the other guy one minute one minute this guy was alive the next minute the guy had died and the reason why you will never catch me in any public fight or any fight physical fight publicly you won't catch me there like like then if you if you think you're gonna catch me fighting in my own home where I'm supposed to have peace you won't catch me there either and that's why I'll be the first person to tell you walk away I'll be the first person to leave the man so Wally <coughs> knowing that you know, knowing that people can lose their lives, what would you advise like women who are going through, you know, yeah. whatever challenges in their marriages? So the first thing that they should do mm -hmm. when they're getting married is protect your source of income. Okay. I think the reason why most people die in their marriage, in, in, in those abusive marriages, are there's actually nowhere for the woman to go to. The man controls the money. The money. Okay. And honestly, in Lagos State, for example, the least affordable house. And this kind of person you're talking about, so let's take for example, maybe you're probably living in Lekki. 
the husband has been shelling out like three million every month. Mm -hmm. No, every year. Yeah. As events. Uh. So you're not going to be able to move from Lekki uh. to Abuja. So you want to remain in Lekki, for example. And even a one bedroom apartment mm. is probably going to set you back like a million naira. Mm. And if you don't have a tangible source of income, mm. that becomes a major problem. Yes. So you are forced to keep living with the man. Yes. I actually have one I'm meditating right now. And what I'm telling you, ladies, is as long as you don't have a means of surviving on yourself, you have to bear this oh thing my God. a little until you have oh my God. some form of money because you're going to oh start my God. by living under. And okay, so we were this lady is not in Nigeria. If it was Nigeria, you probably could find friends. Oh my god. You could move in with a friend. You could find some oh my go back to your parents' house. But when you don't have this kind of options, you need to find your own one million naira to rent the place. Or worst case, okay, maybe you're able to drop your standard, find one and fifty. But you the first move is <laughs> you must have money to take up. Ah. And what we do in Nigeria, what's so common in Nigeria is very simple. You get married, you're in love. The first thing the man does is disable you. Yeah. Do, stop working. Yeah. You stop working. Stop working. And then. And he starts controlling the yeah, money. Yeah. He starts controlling the money. And whoever controls the and money the has the upper hand. And the annoying thing about depending on your husband for money is no matter who the hey, husband is, even if the husband is gone, he gets to a stage where there are some monies you're going to ask for. The man will be freaking angry. No matter who he is. What I mean by freaking angry is you can't even afford to buy your cosmetics. You don't even have that money, so you're going like, that case, can I just get a thousand five hundred to buy the soap? And the man is thinking, show me the lady. Yeah. Now, meanwhile, this lady has probably a degree. She could have worked for me. You are the one who said, no, still I don't take care of my kids. I have to be at, uh, at yeah. home mom, full-time housewife. And then I'll give you more to you this day. But then you get to the stage, and that's why I tell people, no matter what, even if you have to have a supermarket right under your arm, house you have to be selling clothes out of your boots whatever do, do something, something that gives you a measure of income do something so that when this man starts to misbehave you have some money somewhere to say okay you know what i have to move out of it hey you can't divorce a man when you don't have anywhere to go to get out of the house that's the first thing. i agree with so you so when they are financially tied to the man, oh my god they have no choice they keep living in it until I know somebody, I know a close friend who the husband said, wow. When I kill you, when I kill you with beating, you will move out of the house. When I kill you with beating, with beating you will move out of the house. Pastor, guess what? She actually turned on the lady and started beating her blood. This lady by herself, back from Katakot, came back to Lagos. She's been in Lagos for over 12 years, living so long now. Well, he hears so my this thing. This man does not have to do anything other than I beat you to stupid. But, 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 but while he hears my thing. And thank God that we're talking about Nigeria, right? Mm -hmm. We have family. Your family is always going to take you back. Yes. Your, your family will always have an open door policy, is what I feel. Like, even if not your immediate family. They will, but what do you say? Let what about me, your extended family? Let me give you an example. And this, this fact, I'm sure. I'll tell you, woman. But I know when I used to do when, when I started my foreign to this thing. I try to build a base. Well, he's a videographer, by the way. He yeah, does so a documentary. So I, documentary and, uh, well, but I, yeah. I started off with event coverage, weddings in particular. I okay. probably started making love stories in Nigeria, and, and I'm not boasting. Love stories. Love stories. When I cover the, I'll cover your events, your wedding. Yeah. But I make the opening look like you're about to watch a love story. Oh, this wow. one that they do on this thing. I trust go, you. Go as the, back then, they call me Wally Love Stories. I trust you. I work closely with the makeup artist, so yeah. I'm not mentioning anyone. Yeah. But one, if you know her, it's not no, okay. she's still a big man. Yeah. I can't make sure that. I, I remember going through uh, pictures, picture of uh, Ray one yeah. day, and there's this lady, this picture of the lady she uses as markers. I don't know if she still does it. But this lady had blue, beating blue black. Oh my god! So that's the, the wedding picture, and then there's the wedding picture looking all glammed up, all the black, um, covered up, black thing, all covered up. So she uses that one as a She actually went ahead and married the man that was beating her yeah. black up. So the story is wow. the mother, the mother of the bride was actually the one who brought this girl to Bike for the makeup. That's the mother of the bride. The mother knew brought, about the about the abuse. The mother was the one who paid for it. Unless, unless maybe, maybe she, maybe she, she tried to juice up the story, but she has no reason to juice up the story. But that's the story she told me. 
this mother paid her for the makeup this thing for so, her wedding to still go and marry her traditionally how we do it in nigeria is you have your traditional thursday and then the wedding on saturday okay so they had the traditional traditional wedding on thursday mm. the guy beats up the girl on friday mm. the wedding still on saturday, held on saturday. Like wow the guys we have bought a shabby guys so, are you listening so and in those kind of cases what would have happened is probably the man has a stature of money the man controls the money <laughs> so the mother is like oh well, you cannot let this money oh down. my god my daughter you really have to endure wow because chances are if you're not very careful the woman probably also went through the same thing in her own in marriage her own so and she really endured not, yeah, so except that she didn't so die it's comf- yeah it's comfort zone for her she didn't die. see me today i'm sending you up in marriage so what's this problem that you're saying that can be managed. Wow. Mom, so please go ahead. The mother brought the girl for makeup. So this is not the family knew about it. So guess what? When you start having issues in the marriage, do you think that kind of mother will take you back? Oh will my let you know God. that there's nothing you're Enjoy going to it. That's how probably also didn't go to. Wow. But it could be you. Have you seen comment threads on Facebook? Or when when you say man piece of woman, and then there are people who say the woman, even ladies are the ones asking the lady. Asking the question on Facebook, as well. have you guys found out what the woman did? did. That a man will not beat up a woman. That she did something. Yeah, she like did she something had to do something yeah. to, to deserve so, beating. Are you saying are those enough support systems for you to fall back to? The people you go back to and they will tell you but, that. But okay, Wally. Okay, Wally. Yeah, is. So if you have such a mother, you also have uncles, cousins, and that's the good thing about Nigeria because uh, let me tell you from the perspective of somebody that lives abroad. Okay, I live like where I live. I don't have any family close by that I can go to. I can run to. If anything happens, we, yeah. I have to protect myself. In, in each other's yes, family. I have. To, there's. I don't have extended family, but I just feel like, and I understand that cultural, you know, expectation of a woman. You have to be there and enjoy and die inside your marriage because my uh, your mother did the same. Your grandmother. Everybody's endured their husband's beating. So you two, you are doomed, all right, to repeat the same cycle of endurance yeah. and not speak up, all right. If a mother can take her daughter, all right, a, a, you know, a day before her wedding, she was beaten black and blue, take the girl to go get her, her face covered in, you know, with makeup to, for her wedding. Instead of the woman to say, you're not going to marry my daughter again. My daughter will not die. She would rather bury her don't, daughter. I don't buy her, she will be my we bought a Shebi. We we spent. Oh pain. my God! We, we spent money now. And then what <laughs> will what will people say? W W W PS. There's a W W PS syndrome. This is and not then, funny, oh. And then most of this part you you actually talk about, unless you actually close hey. to them, you actually don't know. Some of them keep it away from public glare. Wow. So it's when they are, it's when they eventually do the killing. That's when it becomes, it becomes news. Well, then you know what, eh? See, we all have let me jump we in. Have, okay i know one going on right now uh-huh. there was a man's birthday some some like two or three months ago uh-huh. if you had read the story on facebook the praises the love of my life the sugar of my destiny that this lady wrote about the man uh-huh. but we who know the story uh-huh. you know she gets beaten she gets she's literally oppressed in her house but on Facebook, if you read a Facebook comment about this man's birthday mm. and what she's going to marriage, they are on opposite ends of this thing. So some of this abuse you're talking about is so nicely wrapped up because somebody's even in that marriage thinking, wow. Perfect marriage. Perfect marriage. That's why you can't, you can't believe everything you see yeah. on social media. So, what, so people, the, people who hype up their relationship and they're, they're going through pain in, yeah. their, in their homes. You can't intervene if I don't know that's what you're going through. So, a whole lot of it wow. is enough. It's when you finally can't take it any longer. And then, you know, most of the time, because you're keeping it so repressed, you're not even sharing it with anybody. That's why they're the ones who end up killing. The ones who don't kill are the ones who probably get a support base of somebody to share with. But if you go back to your family, and family says, okay, you know what? We'll see what we can do. You go back to his family. The family tells you, you know what? We're going to find something. To and they probably speak to the man. The man changes for like one day, goes back. Those ones actually last. The ones, that end up killing and they want you don't get to tell anybody because you are living up this, this, up this facade and then someday 
you are you get it up to this point, and then you mm. know that the man. Wow. Okay. Let, you're let able me. To tell out, you're able to speak out to somebody. You hardly will not deserve to kill him. Let me say hi to some other people that joined. Shola Oyekpito, my fellow uh, uh, great Akokites. How you doing? Okay. Uh, what? what <laughs> you two, you joined. Um. OG, OG, hello ring. How you, honey? Roland Bangura, how you doing? And Basi, our Basi. Basi Mr. Basi. Yinka Craig's a former Basi. cook. Basi there, uh, uh, checking out, Basi, how you doing? I see you at the Wavo. Dr. Sonny Oputa, how you doing? Sonny Obi, welcome to Pillow Talk with Fab. Joyce Odigi, welcome to Pillow Talk. In Kiro Kaloki, they mean more. They mean more. How are you, honey? How is Philadelphia? I agree to Brian Young Chief. How are you doing? How is Hong Kong? Uh, Mustafa Harun, how are you doing? Nee Tabiti. Oh, wow. Welcome to Pillow Talk with Fab. Uh, my sister, my track queen, Ali Matu Sadiatu. How are you doing, honey? I'm with you know. Happy Valentine's Day to everyone. Fanny Cecilia, you that you have been doing love, love. I've been seeing you doing love on Facebook. How are you, honey? Welcome to Pillow Talk. Um, Guys, I want to wish everybody a happy Valentine's Day. In case you don't have a Valentine, I hope somebody will surprise you the way Wale, uh, you Wale has surprised me today. He just called me from nowhere and said, Oh, I mean, I'm in your area. I'm like, Okay, now let's do this, let's do this once and for all. I haven't postponed it for like how many times now? I've been postponed like five times, and it's all because of that girl. What's her name again? That's a Jennifer Wigwe Uloma. Big yes. Newscaster. This big yes. This girl. Go go big girl. Go go big girls at 30. Eh? Because of hash, I, I, we postponed this meeting like 20,000 uh, times. But I'm glad you're able to make it. So, what, can you tell us is that, what is the project that you're working on right now? I know you've done a few things for is it CNN. I'll be one of those uh, BBC. BBC. Just talking, BBC. Okay, what did you do for them? BBC. Um, Zina Badu was doing, was, um, doing a story <coughs> on. Okay, so she came in 2014. Zena who? Zena Badawi. Yeah, I don't watch BBC, she's but I'm like, sure they know her. She's like their own Christina Mampo. Oh, okay. So she did a documentary. So you work with her? Look at you. Yeah, yeah. Making money. 2014. Don't she tell me they didn't make money. I'm just managing the money. <laughs> so, she's, so recently she did something on the history of Africa. So we showed her. We did all the filming in Nigeria for her. The last time, 2014, that was The Lost Child. Yeah. Some documentary about some lady whose picture was, at the, was in the... Um, Queen's um, archives. Okay. So she did trace the, the story. So we went around like uh, went, went around Lagos. But this last documentary was we went around Lagos, interviewed some the lead uh, up of Lagos, the what's this woman name? So yeah, do such such kind of projects. Okay. I just came back from Kano. That was Kano, Asaba, Onicha, Lagos and which other states? Abuja. Okay. Doing the breast cancer road for it. So I have an okay. NGO. And I also serve on the board, so I do most of their filming. Okay. So that for me is like a personal project. Okay. So went around the country. Just Perfect. To... I'm sure Mr. Inka Craig, God rest his soul. May yeah, his soul God rest in soul. peace. Mr. Inka Craig brought every one of us together. Um, from the mathematics. From, 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 yeah. From, he brought all of us together. Mr. Inka Craig, God bless you. God rest your soul. He gave me an opportunity. I was already on TV where, you know, I when Inka Craig decided to give me the opportunity to co anchor Daybreak Nigeria and um, what it's I think you know um, you have Mr. Craig to thank for yeah, yeah, yeah. for you know what you do I'm today. I was working for an insurance company, IT department. Okay. And then I saw the advert on TV, Daybreak Nigeria. And you went. Yes, my own eh, is so funny, and I don't want to even talk about this thing because my story is so funny that when I when I Marian Arthur and I used to work for one small um, independent producer. And Miriam was doing her own show, I was doing my own show. Then I think she had problems, got fired or something. She didn't have a job. Um, then this NTA thing opened, I went and I got called and I got you know hired. And I had to beg Mr. Craig. I said, Listen, I know somebody who is fantastic. That's Miriam Arthur. I had to call her. She, she went to DBN to go and look for a job to see. If, I think she had worked with them to see if DBN was going to take her back. But so I called her and I said, Calm down. She was like, I don't have money for trans. I said, Calm down, I'll pay for your taxi. That's how Marian Arthur came and got introduced to Inca Craig and became the anchor, you know, for the, the co our co anchor now, alongside Jeffrey, uh, um, Jeffrey Ozemena for Daybreak Nigeria. So we all have Mr. Inca Craig to thank for um, the birth of a wonderful um, 
career in broadcasting. So guys, I hope you all enjoyed um, watching. I know this topic is very serious, so I, usually I don't like to go that heavy, but today I just, you know, like, I've been seeing a lot in the news about women killing her men and the domestic violence. I just, I just had to say something about it. I had to, like, do something. Um, you know, I hope people watch this video and pick, you know, pick up one or two things and just understand that you should not stay in a toxic or abusive relationship. And listen, the signs are always there. There's no telling me that you did yes, not notice. Sorry. Even from the, 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 the fr even while you're dating while somebody, you're dating you can time tell time. somebody who who is violence. Be because one day, you know, bad people say a finiwa. That you know, the behavior, human behavior is like a smoke. You can't hide smoke because smoke will find a way to seep out. All right, you can't cover it. Even if you cover it, it will seep out through what whatever means. All right. So you always see the signs. Please look at the signs. Please run for your life. Please do the right thing. If you have mothers that will try to um, force you to endure, you can stand up for yourself. If you have men who will you know, try to control you by controlling the money, just say, shove it. I did it before. I left a marriage without a dime. I lost my home. I lost my car. I lost everything. I started from scratch. But hey, I am glad I did because it got to a point I told myself, I said, I am going to die here. I will die here if I stay. I knew it. And I had the courage to leave. And I know you can also have the courage to leave whatever situation you're in. I just, I'm praying for you all. Okay? Um, <laughs> I'm praying for you all. Um, EU King Semo. Semo Vita. Semo Nina. I'm still waiting for me oh, for your song. You, you were supposed to sing. Magic in the BBO, Semo. She boy, you're coaching the Lizzo ring now. Eh? Oh, you're coaching the Lizzo ring. Fabuloso. Oh, yeah. Kia, kia, kia. Make you watch your next record. Put my name, dear. I'm still why anyone of them. How are you, my dear? My my niece. Um, Akisha Pet Green. How you doing? You know who Akisha Pet Green is? Let me tell you. But this is your last ex husband. Oh, okay. How is that one doing? She's shocking. Fadi is in TV. She's, she's, she's still there? Yeah, yeah. Okay, good for her. Fadi and I, we've lost touch. You know, we're, we're no longer body-body body. because, yeah, she don't, she don't, <laughs> but that's okay. That is all. Yeah. all right, guys. Um, That's all we have today. I hope you did enjoy. Thank you so much for joining AKA Fab of Nigerian Celebrity Network. All right. Uh, we are just chilling here. Chilling here. Wale, you want to say bye-bye? Bye. -bye? bye. Hi guys. Pizza, pizza, P from Lagos, Nigeria. Be look up with Fab. Uh, mm, mm. Bye guys. Bye.